Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to bleed your brakes. My car also has a manual transmission with a hydraulic clutch linkage, so I'm going to bleed that also. This method pretty much applies to any car or truck. The brake system functions by hydraulics. So what that is, is a master cylinder, a slave cylinder, and some hydraulic fluid inside. This fluid has to be not compressible. When you apply a force to the input master piston, applying the force pressurizes the fluid this could be thousands, tens of thousands of PSI. That pressurized fluid then is the same pressure throughout the whole system. Then the pressure of the fluid inside the slave cylinder will push out the piston, right? So you can easily uh, pressurize the system like this and really there's no give, right? And as you press the master piston, the slave piston will move out. And that's how the hydraulics work. Now what you could do in a real brake system, what you have is a brake caliper like this. And uh, the brake caliper, the hose comes in and puts the fluid inside here. And this is actually your piston right here. And as this piston pushes out, it will actually, you have a rotor that sits here. And the piston will push the brake pad to pinch the rotor. And that's what gives you your braking stopping force. So one problem with a hydraulic system then, what happens if you have air in the system? Or just bubbles of some sort. It doesn't have to be air, it can be just vapor from the fluid. So now what you have is this guy can be pressed and the, the slave is not moving but the master is. So you get this sponginess, right? Uh, a feeling and that would give a brake pedal in your car a spongy feeling. You don't want that. So we've got to make sure we get all the air out of the system or we don't want any bubbles to form in the system for whatever reason. Obviously brake fluid must have some special requirements when they make it. I mean you don't want it to freeze in winter and when you're heavy braking and you're, you know, there's a lot of heat being generated by the brakes you don't want the fluid to boil because that would create vapor bubbles that could be compressible and you don't want it to deteriorate the rubber seals on your pistons, right? These would start to swell up and leak. And also you want it to have the correct viscosity. Obviously, for anybody who's ever pumped transmission or gear oil into a gearbox, you know that when you try to squeeze oil through a tube or through a small orifice, the thicker that oil, man, it gets hard to pump. So obviously you need the correct viscosity or the thickness, the ability for the oil to pour, you need it to be correct for the fluid, for the system to function properly, right? And also the ABS system for the, for the ABS solenoids to function properly and the ABS pump and all that stuff. That also needs a specific uh, viscosity of oil. So, you know, when they design brake fluid, uh, they had to do it properly. So there's different types of brake fluids. There's DOT3, DOT4, DOT5, and DOT5.1. DOT3 and 4 are pretty much the same, except DOT4 has slightly higher boiling point and DOT4 is what's pretty much used in all vehicles today. DOT5 is a different animal altogether and is more for special applications. And DOT5.1, that's pretty much a superior DOT3, DOT4. It's the same type as DOT3 and 4. DOT3, 4 and 5.1 is made of a mixture of oil and glycol. Now glycol is a type of alcohol but when they make the glycol it starts out dry. There's no water in it. But the glycol is hygroscopic and what that means is it absorbs moisture right out of the air or you know around the, the uh, piston seals uh, any water there or even right through the pores in the metal cylinders it can absorb you know atmospheric moisture if you get it on your skin it'll turn your skin black and dry it out uh, so you know don't get it on your hands it also really works really well at strip and paint so uh, don't get it on your car. If you do, you want to have some water nearby to splash it off to clean it up. So the DOT5 fluid is silicone based. Yeah, that's like the stuff in boobs. It won't damage your paint and it won't absorb moisture. It also won't mix with the DOT3, 4, or 5.1 stuff. And if there's any moisture in your system, or if the system had DOT4 in it, it won't mix with that stuff and soak it up and be able to get rid of it. The DOT5, unlike 3 and 4, will compress with temperature. It can make your pedal feel spongy. It also can cause the anti-lock brakes to not work properly because the silicone stuff, DOT5, has a different viscosity. 
and that affects the, the pulsation or the modulation that the ABS solenoids do when it tries to, you know, not lock up your brakes. The water that DOT 3 and 4 absorbs will do a couple things. After 10 or 15 years, it'll start to rust your brake system from the inside out. And the bleed screws on your calipers, they'll become seized up. You won't be able to loosen them up. And they'll also become clogged, and you won't be able to bleed your brakes with them. So then you're going to have to replace these if they're not seized into the caliper. If they are seized, you're probably going to have to replace the entire caliper. But what's more noticeable is the loss of braking performance. You get brake fade. So this is a brake caliper. Your pads, your inboard pad is connected into this piston. Now this piston has a lot of brake fluid surrounding it. So when this piston, hydraulic pressure, pushes this piston out, this pad will rub against the rotor and create a lot of heat from friction. That heat will get transferred through the pad and through the piston and into the fluid. New dry DOT4 fluid will boil at around 230 Celsius but moisture content will make it boil at a lower temperature. If the brake fluid has absorbed as much as 5% moisture, which is possible over a few years, then the boiling point may drop by half, and that will make the fluid boil at even lighter braking scenarios. Under heavy braking situations, when the brakes are hot enough, the boiling brake fluid will have bubbles. Those bubbles make the fluid compressible, and that prevents the fluid from gaining extra pressure even when you press harder on the pedal. This is why you don't get any additional stopping power even by pressing harder on the pedal. That's what's called brake fade. So the manufacturers of brake fluid recommend that you change stuff every two years. Now, I'm not that religious about it. I try to change it every time I do my brakes, or at least, you know, every three or four years. But if, you know, if, if you're a car nut and you have the time, you should change it every two years. Now, what I have in front of me that I like to use is a product called AT or Albert Teves. It's German stuff and it comes in two different flavors. This is an old can. This is the new can, I guess. And what it's called is AT Super Blue or you can get AT Type 200. This stuff and this stuff is pretty much the exact same product. The only difference is this stuff is blue color, this stuff is gold. That helps you change the new fluid because when you push in a fluid of different color you know the new stuff is coming out because you're getting a different color so it's good to alternate between blue and gold blue and gold now this is like considered to be racing brake fluid that's the uh, boiling point of this stuff is 280 celsius when it's brand new and dry compare that to 230 celsius for regular standard dot four so this is like a superior dot four so there's three ways I know of how to bleed your brakes. The first is you just use the, ma the piston in the master cylinder to pressurize the fluid in the system. And when you crack open a bleed screw, the pressure will just force the fluid out the bleed screw. So basically you just uh, pump the brake pedal and you force the master cylinder. Method two is pressure bleed. You have this bottle. And you can buy this at Bavarian Auto Sport or many different places. You pour brake fluid in the bottle, you hook the stopper to the master cylinder, and you pressurize the bottle to 15 psi. So what that does is that pressurizes the system to 15 psi, and that will force force fluid through the system. And as the force as the fluid leaves the system, this will keep replenishing the master cylinder with fluid. And the third method is gravity bleed. The master cylinder is typically located high on the firewall, and so the brake caliper is down low. So you've got a couple feet of height. Fluid likes to run downhill, right? So what you do is you crack the bleed screw, and the fluid will just slowly drip out over time. Now, some people don't have the patience to wait around all day and let the brakes bleed. There is a, a feature that you can do to speed that process up. And what that does is you use a vacuum pump. So what you've got is... You, get your bleed screw, you hook your hose onto your caliper, then you have a pump like this with something like this. And this is just a container that you pressurize. So what you do is, as the thing is dripping, bleeding, you pump this guy up to probably 15 or probably 20 inches of mercury, and that creates a suction, and that will suck the brake fluid out of the system. So that's the gravity bleed method.